So we will go ahead and get started. I think everyone can see and hear us. Thank you everyone for your patience and welcome to our session today. Um, I'm Bethany Trainer with GIG. I am the support groups manager. Um, I've been living gluten-free for a long time now, almost 10 years. Um, and yeah, I run all of our support groups programs, um, including Generation GF, um, which Stacy is the Generation GF supervisor. So I will uh, hand it over to her to do a quick intro um, and then we'll get started. Hi everybody, like Bethany said, my name is Stacy Yonke. I am the Generation GF supervisor. I um, have been with GIG in some capacity for about 17 years. Um, I am the mom of three gluten-free kids. They are from ages of 16 to 23. And so working with the kids program is very close to my heart. Awesome, thank you, Stacy. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen um, and we'll get started with the presentation. And we will get started. Um, Stacy, and if you can see the chat, um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but um, just let me know if you can't see the, the presentation and we'll try it again. <laughs> but I think we're good. I can see it, go ahead. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so today's session uh, is all about social support while living gluten-free and how social support is more important than ever, um, especially in our modern scenario and especially for our gluten-free youth. Um, just a quick note that um, some slides may show individuals not wearing masks, um, but in the current environment, um, if you're at a support group meeting or um, you know, in a social support situation that masks um, should still be used um, or some um, groups are still meeting virtually. So that should be um, just fresh in your mind. Um, so just a little bit of background um, for some of those who are not familiar with Gluten Intolerance Group or GIG. Um, GIG's mission, simply put, is to make life easier for everyone living gluten-free. Um, GIG has been working for over 45 years as a leading resource for people living gluten-free for any reason. Uh, so whether this is due to celiac disease, um, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, or other autoimmune conditions, uh, GIG provides resources, education, uh, and awareness regarding all aspects of living a safe and informed gluten-free life. Um, just a little bit about our programs. Uh, we have a variety of programs supporting this mission, including our food safety programs. Uh, our Gluten-Free Certification Organization, or GFCO, uh, certifies our gluten-free food products to the strictest standards, and that is 10 parts per million um, or less of gluten. So GFCO certifies uh, a large amount of food products and is available to help offer protection or reliability to everyone that needs to be um, eating gluten-free. Uh, we also have the Gluten-Free Food Service Program, or GFFS, which provides food service validation uh, to a big variety of different food service establishments as validated gluten-free safe spots. Um, so you'll see these uh, logos here as well, or these um, safe spot marks. Um, some examples of the safe spots will be restaurants, meal kit services, um, universities, hospitals, um, senior living facilities. And this year, we do have an exciting change going on um, for our certification mark, which can be seen here, um, the certified gluten-free mark. Um, and you'll notice that the gluten-free safe spots mark is here as well, so you can keep an eye out for those. And they're nice and colorful, new marks, um, all over the products in stores and food service establishments. So. Um, GFFS also has a coaching program uh, for those that are interested in working to spread that validated safe spot um, across the country. So um, gluten-free, who and why? About 1% of um, the population has celiac disease um, for which the prescription is currently a lifelong gluten-free diet. Um, which can be quite an adjustment for most people once they're diagnosed. I know that it was for me. Um, the catch is that approximately 50% of those with celiac disease 
are currently undiagnosed. Um, Non-celiac gluten sensitivity is even more prevalent at about 13% of the population or higher. Uh, so that's quite a significant number of people who need to be living gluten-free. Um, both of those conditions affect people across all the ages, regions, and ethnicities across the world. Uh, additionally, about 33% of people uh, actually carry the genetic predisposition to develop celiac disease. Um, and those who carry the genes for celiac disease may or may not develop it through their life, but the genetics can be passed down through families. So screening family members is important if someone does test positive for those genetics. So how to thrive gluten-free? Um, there are several components that collectively support living and thriving gluten-free. Uh, these include learning um, and education on all aspects of living gluten-free. So that's from what you can safely eat, how to read food labels um, and ingredients, how to interpret these labels, uh, accessing safe um, certified gluten-free foods. Um, and that's really looking for those GFCO marks that you see here. Uh, relearning how to safely eat outside of your home, the questions to ask of food service establishments, and on the flip side of that, um, cooking at home and learning to prepare safe and uh, affordable gluten-free dishes that taste just as good as the foods that you were eating before, um, living gluten-free. So of course, there are uh, a lot of other settings to consider, um, especially when you're traveling um, or attending school or going to a friend's house, um, maybe going on a date or some kind of um, celebratory event like a wedding. Uh, there are just so many nuances to consider while living gluten-free. Um, I'd also like to stress the importance here of doing routine medical follow-ups with your doctors um, and or dietitians and other medical professionals um, after beginning to live gluten-free and also much later down the line. Um, it's medical follow-up is just very important um, for everyone. So all that being said, one of the biggest components of thriving while living gluten-free is finding social support. So what do we mean by social support? Um, to put it simply, social support is in this context, making connections with others who are gluten-free um, to get support, coping skills, um, knowledge and education, which all help to improve your quality of life living gluten-free. Um, connecting with others for assistance. Assistance as part of your support network is really the key here. Um, we're really talking about being able to relate to others who have knowledge of or who have experienced what it's really like eating and living gluten-free. Um, because those of us who are living gluten-free, including myself, know how much of a challenge it can be. Um, and it can be challenging for different people in different ways as well. So for instance, um, youth and teens, if there are any kids on our session today, um, even what even your parents could feel lonely or isolated or confused right after a diagnosis or even years later, just like you do, um, there might be concerns about what's safe and what's not and learning to cope with these new feelings. Um, and here are just a couple examples of some of the questions that you might ask yourself. So, how can strong social support really help with these feelings and learning to thrive with these conditions? Um, and here um, we can talk about the benefits of social support. So social support networks can provide vital emotional support, um, education and information about living gluten-free, as well as a sense of belonging and companionship while living gluten-free. Um, these three main areas of social support can significantly impact your overall well-being and um, support groups are an important component of social support networks, um, which those networks can also include your friends and family and other peers, um, but that support groups are pretty vital to that as well. Um, there is a good amount of research that shows that the real importance of social support support for chronic conditions, um, such as celiac disease and non-celiac gluten sensitivity. 
Um, some good news is that 40, 42% of people eating gluten-free do use a social support network and thus they have a higher quality of life compared to others who don't have that social support, who do not use social support systems um, such as support groups. So it should be noted um, that having face-to-face -face social support um, does rank higher in terms of quality of life. And especially in this COVID-19 scenario, I would say, um, this could also translate to virtual face-to-face -face meetings. So any of those Zoom meetings that you may be on, that would be more of that face-to-face, -face. you know, you still have the camera-to-camera -camera <laughs> situation. Um, for teenagers also, it's especially challenging um, with wanting to fit in with friends who they don't need to eat gluten-free perhaps, and it can be tempting maybe to just have one bite or cheat on the diet, um, but having that strong support network as a teen can really make all the difference um, in having higher dietary adherence while still being able to thrive and smile, live in gluten-free. Um, so just if you're interested in a little bit more on the research, um, I'm just gonna pull this up real quick. And then hopefully you can all see this. This is just an example of some of the uh, research that GIG would reference um, for educational purposes. Um, if you're interested in learning more and reading more about those research, you can go to um, gluten.org. There's a lot of educational resources there, or you can go to Google and type in you know, scholarly articles um, if you're interested in the Quality of Life um, Association. Let me go back to the screen. So what research really does tell us is that um, a strong social support network for people who need to be gluten-free or those who have a chronic condition in general um, have a significantly higher quality of life and a better dietary adherence than those um, without adequate social support. And that can translate to better health and sense of um, well-being overall. And who doesn't like that, right? <laughs> Um, so on our next slide, um, we have some insights um, that we've received from gluten-free teens who attended GIG's Gluten-Free Teen Summit event in Disney Springs, Orlando in 2018. Um, and some of these insights were that teens were really feeling um, collectively that they were afraid of being a burden or misunderstood by their family, their friends, their peers. Um, Many of them had experienced food-related food related bullying, and a lot of them just had general fears um, about food. And um, you'll see maybe the example down here that, that we have on the slide from Erica, um, where one teen you know, said that they were scared to have the box of gluten-free spaghetti that touched another box of regular spaghetti. So that's kind of what we're talking about you know, when we were referencing those food fears. Um, however, the Teen Summit really did provide um, teens with that social support network. So teens found their tribe at the summit, which is just really heartwarming and it was great to see. Um, Stacy will be touching on this a little bit later um, in our presentation and going into more detail about some of the th stuff we have coming up for uh, our next Teen Summits as well. So um, in the general population, there is often a lack of knowledge and understanding about gluten-free, celiac disease, non-celiac gluten sensitivity um, that you should be aware of. So basic knowledge of celiac disease and the gluten-free diet um, is just less, um, less known. It is becoming more popular, but maybe not in terms of the necessity of living gluten-free for people with celiac disease and non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Um, the seriousness of the medical need, and that it's very hard for people to understand um, that there's just one bite or a few crumbs is just too much and is going to really set off a reaction for people. Um, some of the things and challenges uh, for social situations um, might be dining out, parties with friends, dates, sports, school, um, movies. This is not an exhaustive list, of course. <laughs> um, and some of the stories that um, we're hearing, and we've heard so many stories of challenges like this and the social situations that 
um, were on the previous slide, um, that were able to be overcome through our social support programs and our initiatives. Um, and these were just a short selection of the examples out of a myriad of these. Um, so yeah, just some of the examples are not feeling alone anymore, especially for gluten-free kids. Um, like I said, at the summit, people, uh, they were able to connect with each other, um, whereas before they may have felt very isolated that they might've been the only kid living gluten-free um, in their class, something like that. Um, so those shared experiences um, for those new to living gluten-free and those not new to it, you know, I've been living gluten-free for 10 years plus now, and um, I'm still learning new things and still connecting with others living gluten-free, and that's just a very important aspect. Um, and really that return to the feeling of normalcy um, that you had before living gluten-free, that's very important as well. So how does someone find support for living gluten-free through the entire lifespan? Um, GIG offers some important community outreach programs um, that really do help with that connection. Um, we have support groups for adults. We have um, Generation GF Kids programs, which includes support groups, camps, Kids Magazine, Teen Summit, and Mentor Programs, which Stacy will get um, more in depth with those in a little bit. Um, we do have a social media presence um, for GIG and for Generation GF um, on all the major platforms. Um, and just to touch base a little bit about some of the other educational resources that we have. Um, we have website resources, educational bulletins, articles, research updates, um, education to medical professionals, including school nurses. Um, and I would encourage everyone to take a look. Um, if you go to Nourish Festival website, Lola O'Rourke, our education coordinator and um, registered dietitian, she did a great talk yesterday about living gluten-free and the basics and beyond. Um, yeah, I would encourage everyone to go check that out. Um, it was just really great information. So just a little bit more about GIG support groups programs. Um, GIG offers a pretty extensive social support network of over 80 uh, volunteer driven support groups across the US and internationally. Um, again, groups are open to all ages uh, with Generation GF groups focusing entirely on gluten-free youth and their social support. So what does a support, support group look like? Um, some of the things you can expect from GIG support groups include um, education and medical resources, information on local resources. So that might be something like a local restaurant list, you know, what, what's safe to eat um, and where, um, different food markets that carry certain gluten-free foods, um, that kind of thing. Um, travel resources, meetings and events. Um, right now, um, it just depends on the area, but some groups may be meeting in person um, with the local and state guidelines in mind for COVID-19, um, but there are still many groups that are meeting virtually. So that's um, primarily through Zoom or Skype, um, maybe Facebook Live, that kind of thing. Um, so you can always, always have that connection, even through this COVID-19 time, which can be extra isolating for people. So um, most of our groups do have social media presence, um, mostly on Facebook. Um, their information will be listed on our website. Uh, email connections and newsletters. I know a ton of groups are um, still doing regular outreach right now. So there's no um, shortage of information available for everyone. And this is not an exhaustive list. This is just the main components that you might expect from um, interacting with a GIG support group. Some examples of our recent support group activities. Um, they're super fun, but also informative. Um, so there's been some virtual happy hours, um, some educational speakers, uh, gluten-free through the pandemic was one of the um, talks that was given, which is just very vital information um, for living through kind of um, an unexpected time. What things you might want to have in, on hand, um, you know, through quarantine, um, there's been virtual cooking classes, youth virtual scavenger hunts, and other games like um, I know our GIG of Portland group has done a really 
popular Jeopardy, gluten-free Jeopardy game that's always a big hit. Um, there's been socially distanced picnics outside where people are staying over six feet away from each other, um, but still able to enjoy some time um, together and connecting. Um, some groups have done restaurant awareness and education events where um, they help to talk with restaurants um, and give them a little bit more information about preparing safe gluten-free food um, and then going out and eating together as a group at that restaurant. So a lot of different examples going on right now. Um, so how to find a support group? We have uh, all of our 80 plus groups listed on our website here. So I'm gonna pull this up um, and just give you a quick look at what it looks like on the GIG website. So if you scroll down, um, you'll see that there's a drop down box here that you can select by state and you can Go all the way down, see what you're looking for, um, or you can go down and there's a full listing here um, of all of our groups. So you'll see that the general support groups will have this GIG logo here, um, and then they'll have the area of that group and the name and the contact information here. Um, and then the Generation GF groups will have this logo as well. Um, so you can tell the difference between the, the youth groups and the more general or adult-based groups. Um, if you are on that page and you don't see that there's a support group in your area and you are interested in starting one, um, you can fill out um, an application to volunteer to start a group here on our website. And this is what the form looks like. Um, just very basic information. Um, fill out all of this. And you, in the areas of interest in volunteering, you would just put support group leader and you can sign up that way and we'll be in touch with you. Um, that's technically our volunteer application. And then um, we provide all the training and onboarding for you and assist you into starting that group. So we are there with you every step of the way. <laughs> We're there with live support. And so anything that you might need re related to support group management, we're there to help you out. So um, with that being said, I will switch it over to Stacy, who's gonna talk um, a little bit more about our Generation GF support groups. So go ahead, Stacy. Thanks, Bethany. Um, like Bethany said, we have the the support groups. We have the adult based or family, and then we have the kids. Um, giving there just that place for our kids to go. Um, what the Generation GF groups look like? They are there for any kid from toddler to teenagers. They support um, everyone. They provide support and education to families um, nationwide. So including in Generation GF is free. It's a free membership. Um, in that membership, it includes um, magazines, three to four magazines a year, quarterly newsletters, um, monthly activities, um, interactive on either the local level and the national level with what we do. We do different chats. We have a teen chat, which is 14 to 19. And then we also have a tween, which is 11 to 13. Um, our mentorship program, activities, teen summit, and camp. Generation GF Magazine, what is included in that? Our interviews with kids, just like them. We do a spotlight kid. We do a spotlight group, with, which showcases some of our support groups that we have, the different activities that they do. Um, we have gluten-free, kid-friendly recipes within there. Um, educational information that is written and geared towards kids. Um, and then a support group listing like Bethany had showed you on the link where you can go in and look either a master list or for your area. Um, all of our support groups are run by volunteers. Um, if you don't happen to see a support group in your area and you're interested, definitely let us know. Um, our mentor program is something new that we've started just recently. Um, the mentor program is something that is really important to us. It is that social support um, that empowers, especially when it comes from the interaction between kids. 
Um, it builds those gluten-free connections. It's that peer-to-peer -peer mentorship that plays that powerful role in connecting these kids. They, they hear stories, they get advice from kids that are just like them. If it's somebody who's new, newly diagnosed, they can talk to somebody who's been in their exact same shoes. They know the, the struggles that they're facing. Um, to be a mentor, they, it is the age of 15 to 19. Um, mentor is 6 to 19, and they're looking for that guidance and support. Um, our mentors do, you can sign up, and Bethany will show you again on there is it's a volunteer page you scroll down and you click mentorship um our mentors are go through an application process they go through a screening as well as a training a very thorough training um and then they're, they're connected with a mentee um they would then contact that office or contact that family in setting up those those meetings those calls it could be a phone call we strongly encourage the face-to-face -face through video chats um, just to make that connection and they can talk about school they can talk about friends you know, how do they handle birthday parties sport events practice banquets and all that type of stuff different activities that we offer our kids is we do youth activities this could include a scavenger hunt um, we've done a virtual scavenger hunt where we've had kids from all over the U.S. It was fun. They laugh. They, they interact with others. We do the tween chat, which, like I said, is 11 to 13, and the teen chat. Um, there are times when we will have a guest speaker. We could have a child psychologist. We could have um, a nutrition-based, you know, topic. Or there's times when these kids just get together and they talk. We may throw a discussion question out there and get them thinking on how they handled it or how would you handle something from there. Um, to sign up, then you can become a member of Generation GF and then watching the, the Facebook page, the newsletter, updates, and email blast or the magazine. The gluten-free summit, um, we do the teen summit. Um, the last one was in 2018. Our next date is July 14th through the 17th. Um, it's basically a three days of lectures and interaction with the, the, the teens that are there. We've had speakers that have been top celiac doctors, nutritionists, child psychologists. Um, influencers who have been there, parent roundtables, teen roundtables, um, just getting them to connect. We've had activities. Um, the most important thing that comes from this is the teen bonding. These kids in 2018 bonded after three hours and made friendships, and that was our goal for the end of the three days. Um, to sign up, Bethany will show you that as well. Um, we really encourage the kids to interact with each other, and we've not seen an issue with that. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, the kids love it. The parents love it because then they can also connect with other parents as well. Um, summer camps. Summer camps are a time for fun for all kids, no matter what age, where you live. Um, it's a great time to make memories and friendships in these, and kids shouldn't have to focus on food. Um, what we do is we connect with camps. We actually, through our um, food service program, we have two camps that are validated gluten-free safe spots. Um, one of them is um, the NJY camp in Pennsylvania and Camp Gilmont in Texas, um, our food service um, programs have went to camps and and talked to them have certified their kitchens for that week that they're gluten free we also work with two other camps very closely um camp south in washington and camp Canada in north carolina i get the menus from camp i review those and i make um substitutions to our kids that are gluten free there for the week are eating the exact same thing it's just it's safe for them um, I actually go and I cook at these camps or somebody from our office will be there cooking for these camps. And as you can see in the pictures, they love their, 
their donuts. They really love their foods. These are just some of the examples of the foods that we've cooked there as well. So again, this is, you know, between what I've told you, what Bethany has, this is what we what we do at GIG. These are the programs. These are the services that we do, making that gluten-free connection out there. Um, to continue the conversation, um, we recommend that you head over to our speaker page. Um, we have phone calls that we can do. You can sign up for a 15-minute phone call with us. Um, head over to our GIG Facebook, or sorry, Frequently Asked Questions page there. There's the link. Um, many of your questions may have already been answered. You can submit new questions as well. Um, you may also contact Bethany or myself here at the GIG.outreach at gluten.org. Um, I will send it back over to Bethany. Thank you so much, Stacey. And um, yeah, that concludes our um, session talk. So now we're going to open it up for questions with everyone. So let me get back to the page here get my video back going and stop my screen share first of all let's see am i still sharing my screen stacy <laughs> am i still i think so yeah okay let's try to stop that there we go now you're good <laughs> all right so i'm going to take a look over in the chat here um, and see um, if we can answer any questions. Uh, the first one that I see here, um, and I'm actually going to go from the bottom up, it's just the first one that I see here is from Julie. Um, can you speak about the time commitment needed to start a new support group? Yeah, so um, it really is going to vary from place to place, um, depending on where you're located and the, the amount of time that you have in your personal life. So um, you can um, start slowly you know you can start with maybe one meeting per month um, and just the general planning that you would need to do that maybe a few hours a week um, and you know maybe you want to meet quarterly even to start it just depends um, on what you really have the time that you have to devote to it um, it is volunteer run so um, Let's see, the next one I see is from Susan. Um, do you recommend if as an adult, uh, you know you have celiac disease and the celiac gene, should you get your children tested for both through the blood test? Um, that I would say you definitely want to um, see if your children also have the gene. If they don't have the gene, then they may not, they, they can't develop celiac disease. They may have some other sensitivities. Um, but I do think it's it's good. I've done the, the gene test myself. Um, I know my boyfriend has done it. I think they're pretty popular now and a lot less expensive uh, to get than they used to be. Um, and I believe that you can even get them um, through those 23andMe tests. I'm not um, endorsing anything right now, but um, I know that when I did it, uh, I just did a saliva test. So um, let's see some other questions. Stacey, are you able to see the chat? Um, no, I don't see it. Um, I don't see other questions at this time. Um, do you have a map of support groups? Yes, we do. Um, so let me, I can share my screen again real quick and pull up what it looks like on our website. Um, let's see, I had it here, get involved. Here we are, okay. So you'll see on our website here, um, it's gluten.org slash community slash support groups. So you can see, I'm gonna just move this. <laughs> um, you can zoom in and see if there's one in your area. And this is not an exhaustive map. Um, I think the best way to find a support group near you, near you is to go to the dropdown. Um, let's take, uh, actually let's do California as an example. So then it will submit that. And then if you go below here, this will list all of our groups in California. So Riverside, San Francisco, Sacramento, Humboldt County, you'll see all of the, all of the groups listed there. Um, so it's a handy little tool. <laughs> Let me get back to my questions here. Um, okay. Um, Bethany, while you're while you're looking there too, I also wanted to mention, like going back to the Teen Summit, if you um, head over to our speaker page, there is a link to a video like 
recap and just kind of get a feel for what the kids enjoyed from this and what it meant for them. Um, also at our speaker portal as well, is there some education bulletins or some infographics that we have with a symptom infographic. Definitely make sure that you check those out. You can print those out, take them to your doctor, give them to family, share them with anybody because it just shows from head to toe the different areas that are affected when you have celiac disease. Absolutely. Um, does GIG provide content and information for the support group meetings? Um, yes, we do. We have um, a newsletter that we send out monthly to all of our support group leaders. Um, it's called Empowering Leaders, where we have um, just a bunch of different information. We have research updates, leader tips, um, different printable resources, downloads, um, just a, a lot of great information. Um, and of course, we do provide um, ongoing um, support through uh, Life Support with me, Stacy, um, and our colleague Vasca as well. So we have a good team of people um, to support all of our groups here. Uh, let me just go back up to the top of the chat and make sure I didn't miss any other questions um, coming through. Um, and thank you everyone um, for your patience when we were getting started with our um, going live stuff. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions right now. Um, but again, like Stacy mentioned, um, if you want to connect with us um, further, we do have sessions available um, after this. Um, I believe there is a 7 p.m. Eastern time slot um, with, I think Stacy's going to be taking that one. And then there's one right after that. So if you go to our speaker page, you can sign up for that. Um, it looks like one more question here. Um, parent here of daughter recently diagnosed with celiac disease. Uh, it is common. Is it common kids to be terrified of cross-contamination in the home from gluten-free foods? That can definitely be something that they experience, yeah. Um, I know as a college kid, when I was diagnosed, I experienced that. Um, and I think maybe, Stacy, your kids had experienced that at some point too. They, they have, and one of the things with when my kids were, were newly diagnosed and they were all three different ages, different symptoms at diagnosis, um, one of the things that we did to kind of help um, ease their fears is we have a dedicated gluten-free cupboards in our house. Um, my whole house is not entirely the red sticker green that had a green sticker was safe, safe for them. And especially like if grandparents were there or babysitters were there. So if it had a, a green sticker on it, it was safe and it had a red sticker um, it was not. Obviously, those red stickers were in a separate cabinet, but just in case they were put there by mistake. Um, then they knew that they had to check. Um, starting them to look at reading labels, showing them what to choose or what to look for is really important. You know, they would ask me, Mom, is this gluten free? And we would look at it. Even before they really could fully read, I made sure to point out the words so that they were almost like, memorized so they knew what to look for. So there's a lot of points and suggestions that we can help you with, absolutely. Um, one other thing too is as you guys are still on the websites and you're looking, make sure that you check out the GIG booth page. We have several giveaways, things that you can sign up for um, from some of our certified companies as well. Yeah, there's a ton of great stuff. Um, I'm not seeing any, any other questions come in. So I think we may um, go ahead and end the session here. Um, Stacy, are you all set? Did you have anything else you wanted to touch on? No, we don't. Just anytime you have questions regarding our kids groups, send me an email, um, set up for a call, and we can discuss that. Yeah, and same thing for me. Um, you can contact um, myself or my colleague, Vasca. Um, our information is on gluten.org. Um, and you can reach out to us at gig.outreach at gluten.org. So thank you to everyone for attending our session today. And we're going to go ahead and end it now. So thank you and have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.